Hi guys, welcome to Counterpoints, my name is Connor, and today we're going to be breaking down Hell's Reach. It follows Recluse Yark Grimaldos of the Black Templars and his squad during the Third War for Armageddon, and it's a classic, emotional, and violent project that really jump-started the fan animation community. This episode is brought to you by Mastermind Models and Miniatures and Hawkins and Company. Mastermind Models and Minis is an insanely talented paint studio out of Huntsville, Alabama, who do commissions, so if your pile of shame is weighing you down, be sure to check them out in the description below, and be sure to tell them that we sent you. Hawkins & Company is a veteran-owned leather-making firm using the best American-made materials to create the finest handmade wallets available. Coming in classic bifold trucker and biker builds with a variety of patterns and insignias, all made from leather sourced from one of America's last tanneries. So if your wallet is starting to show its age, buy a rugged, beautiful American-made piece of art from Hawkins & Company and use coupon code COUNTERPOINTS for 15% off. Hades Hive will not survive the first week. What is coming in system now far exceeds what has laid waste to the planet before. The other hives must be reinforced a thousand times over. Hades will burn. Syria Tyro. Greetings. How may I be of service, Reclusiak? We have defensive positions in the wastelands manned by the Steel Legion. Yes. Yes. I was informed today exactly what is stored in the underground hangar of the D-16 West Outpost, 98 kilometers to the northwest of the city. None of our briefings mentioned it was a sealed Mechanicus facility. Do you know your history, Adjutant Tyra? I have studied several of the decisive battles of the First War. Then you will know what Mechanicus weapon was designed and first deployed here. I don't think you can be right. Perhaps not. But I intend to learn the truth for myself. One of our gunships will carry a small group to D-16 West in one hour. But it's sealed. It will not be sealed for long. It's Mechanicus territory. I do not care. If I am right in my suspicions, there is a weapon there. I want that weapon, Syria Tyro. And I will have it. You can't leave the city before dawn. The enemy- The enemy will not break the city walls in the first day. And Bayard, Emperor's champion of the Hell's Reach Crusade, will command the Templars in my absence. I can't allow you to do this. It will enrage the Mechanicus. I am not asking for your permission, Adjutant. I am asking if you wish to come with us. to get a shot down. Brother, does anyone ever laugh at your jokes? 
humans sometimes do. We're reminded that the Hive City of Hades, the previous site of the great battle between Gazgul Maga Uruk Thraka and Commissar Sebastian Yark, is predicted to burn. We don't know where this prediction comes from, but only that Yark does not believe the orcs will try to take the city physically, but will destroy it outright as vengeance for their previous defeat. We're greeted with the lonely view of an abandoned servo skull over the mostly evacuated streets. Grimaldus invites Adjutant Syria Tiro, the fifth aide to General Kirov, to accompany him out into the waste to locate a great weapon. This will lend his force a level of authority over guard forces, who may have contradictory orders between the Astartes and High Command. While the Space Marines are the Emperor's angels and are often deferred to as such, that does not mean Marines haven't gone rogue in the past and that Imperial forces have not come to blows over misunderstandings. One example even exists during the Wars for Armageddon, where the Space Wolves turned on the Grey Knights after a demonic incursion to protect guardsmen and civilians from a holy purge sanctioned by the Inquisition. Bayard, the Emperor's champion, is left in charge of the defenses of Hell's Reach and is a formidable warrior. On the eve of great battles, warriors of the Black Templar will meditate and will be blessed with visions of great battles. Common as a vision is seeing a solitary knight struggling against hordes, dealing endless fury to endless enemies. The strongest among those blessed with vision, judged by the chapter chaplains to be of exceptional martial prowess and clarity of vision, will be selected as Emperor's Champion. It is their job to don artificer armor, known as the Armor of Faith, and to carry the Black Sword, a rare and blessed power weapon, into battle to challenge champions of the enemy in single combat. This pays honor to Sigismund, the founder of their chapter, who dueled dozens of enemy leaders in the Holy War for Terra, emerging victorious each time. This is both symbolically and tactically potent, as it bolsters the defenders and devastates the morale of the enemy when Xenos and Chaos leaders are cut down. By bringing the adjutant on mission, Grimaldus is trying to smooth over any misunderstandings between himself and the garrison, though it's likely he would have pushed past or killed anyone between him and his prize. Uh, Andre? What is it now, eh? I'm busy, okay? Is that a gunship? What are you talking about, eh? That. This is Damasca at Boundary 3. Contact, contact, contact. Imperial gunship inbound. That is the Black Templars, yes? They are from Hell's Reach. I know this. I, I listen to my briefings. I do not sleep like you. This can't be good. I do not agree, you know. This is a Statis business. It will be good. Good for us, bad for the enemy. What? It will be good. You'll see, eh? I'm always right. Should we, uh, salute? Is that what you're supposed to do? I don't know. Just stand at attention. Captain, I'm Adjutant Quintus Tyro, seconded to Hive Hell's Reach from the Lord General's command staff. With me are Reclusiarch Grimaldus and Master of the Forge Jurisian of the Black Templars chapter. Greetings. We have come to enter the installation. Forgive me. Is this a joke? Far from it. There is no power here. They left this place entirely devoid of energy. No. There is power. The installation sleeps but does not lie dead. It is locked in hibernation. Power still beats through its veins. The resonance is low, the pulse is slow. I hear it nevertheless. Can you open these doors? Can you get us down into the complex? It will necessitate a great deal of rerouting power from auxiliary sources, and those will be difficult to reach from a remote connection point here. A parasitic feed is required. Jerusian. Answer the question. Forgive me, Reclusia. Yes, I will need one hour. Digging for secrets in the sand, yes? 
Well, that is not going to make the Mechanicus smile, I think. Magnetic field stabilizer housing. What does it do? It houses the stabilizers for a magnetic field generator. That's right. This is it. It is so beautiful. It is magnificent. This would survive orbital bombardment. It is void shielded, armored like no bunker I have ever seen, and sealed with... with a billion or more individual codes. Can you do it? I have never witnessed anything so complex and incredible. It would be like mapping every particle within a star. Can you do it? Yes, Kruziak. But it will take between nine and eleven days. I don't believe it. It can't be here. It is. This is where the Mechanicus hid the Ordinatus Armageddon after the First War. This is the tomb of Oberon. In a world filled with dour, stoic, suffering heroes, it's refreshing to be reminded of humanity's humor in dire circumstances. Guardsman Andre seeks to find fortune in the presence of the Astartes, which he quickly becomes skeptical of when he realizes their goal. Jurisian, the master of the forge, is a tech marine. Tech Marines are selected from the most mechanically adept of their brethren to train on Mars in the Cult of the Mechanicus and in the maintenance of their many great machines. In this way, they have a triple loyalty, first to the Emperor of Mankind, which they view as the Omnissia Incarnate, then to their chapter and in pure reverence the Mechanicus of Mars. Even the dour Jerusian has a sense of humor by sarcastically responding to Syria Tyro's question about technology, showing that even cybernetic characters can be humanized. The Ordinatus Armageddon Oberon is a rumor manifest, a powerful weapon capable of bringing down the mightiest of foes. Grimaldus' existential panic drives him to violate the sacred but myopic jealous hoarding of the Mechanicus, wishing to bring the weapon to bear. I promise I'll go over what it does once the weapon is revealed. Reclusiak. Grimaldus, speak. The old man's predictions were correct, as you suspected. The enemy is annihilating Hades Hive from orbit. It is crudely done. Standard bombardment with mass drivers to hurl asteroids at a defenseless city. A dark day's work, brother. Will you return soon? We are on our way back now.
Yarrick was right. Hades is burning. Brace yourself, brothers! Princep Zaha can feel the violation of the sacred sleep of Oberon's machine spirit. Not only that, but it takes the will of a powerful person, one in a million souls, to command the overwhelming powerful machine spirit of an Imperator Titan. Within the technologies of the Imperium of Man are fused intelligences, from the handheld bolter to the hulking Imperator Titan. They are believed to be manifestations of the divine knowledge of the Omnissiah, and over millennia of service take on personality quirks and tempers of their own, driven to great love and rage of their human charges through ceaseless warfare. Princip Zaha is at risk of being consumed by Storm Herald's machine spirit as it yearns for the battle to come. We are finally witness to the cataclysmic end of Hive Hades, the opening destruction of the orcs wah, meant to terrify humanity before the slaughters to come. Which brings us to the end for now. If you like my breakdowns, like, share, and subscribe, and ring the bell to see whenever new content drops. Comment down below and feel free to fight it out in the comment sections over lore and narrative interpretations. If you can't think of anything to say, then type in comment for the common gods. I'll salute you in real life with an Aquila, but I will reply with an 07 in the comment section saluting you for your service. Become a YouTube or Patreon member to help support the channel, or check out our sponsors. I appreciate you. I'll catch you in the next one. Until the end.